All right, today we are going to talk about inflation. So inflation is going to be the hot topic this year and probably for a while. Um, essentially, inflation is the increase of cost. So the monetary value of a product or a good or anything goes up. So you may have noticed lately that your gasoline bill has greatly increased. That is inflation. You might have gotten a rent hike. Your electric bill is probably up. If you've purchased food or clothing recently, you probably noticed a spike in prices. Your favorite restaurant may have moved up their costs by 20 or 30 percent. And this is a real phenomenon that happens in modern society. Um, it's always it's always happened essentially, but with our current monetary policies, uh, it's more frequent. So if you're older, you probably remember the inflation of the 70s and 80s, but, and even to an extent, the 90s. But for most of our younger clients, this is their first real experience with significant inflation. If inflation's always there to a certain extent, we can't have deflation where prices go down. Often in recessions, prices will go down. But inflation is essentially the cost of goods rising. And so to explain this, I like to think of it as sort of an elastic band. So the price of goods and services is somewhat elastic. So think of it as a rubber band, that line. There are things that push costs up. So right now we're fairly close to full employment. Everyone's working, they have income coming in, they've got extra money, maybe they're getting raises, they've got more money to spend. And so those more dollars are chasing possibly the same amount of goods. You got two people trying to buy the same loaf of bread, whoever's selling that loaf of bread can hike prices. So think of this as what pushes prices up. So when employment is high, we tend to get pressure on prices to move up. Consumption. So when people are spending that extra money they're earning, that'll drive prices up. And there are three big players in consumption. There's those of us, retail consumers, the public. There are corporations. So when companies are making a lot of profit, they may not want to pay taxes on that profit. So oftentimes they spend it, they invest it, they consume it. These are all, in, investing and consuming are two different things, but they both drive prices up. You get two companies trying to buy the same building, that's gonna drive the prices up. You can get into bidding wars. That causes the inflationary effect. You've probably noticed this recently in real estate. You know, multiple people bidding up homes, which causes the price of homes to rise, which then causes the price of rents to rise because they have to justify that revenue off of the cost. If they don't raise rent, they might as well sell that building at the profit. So these are all pressures. And then a big one is government spending. And given that we have, our government has borrowed trillions of dollars in the last couple of years, essentially spent it, flooded it into the economy. That's been a lot of what has caused this inflation. So monetary supply often gets the blame. So monetary supply is when the Federal Reserve or the global Federal Reserves all over the world, the central banks all over the world, they print money and then they usually loan it out. So they create money, they loan it out. Now, if those loans sit in savings, so during the real estate bubble crash, was the first time we got a large increase in monetary supply. You know, there's a lot more dollars in existence now than there were 15 years ago. And if those dollars are sitting in savings accounts, they're remaining in cash, they're on corporate balance sheets and cash, they're in our savings accounts, that does not cause inflation because that money's not moving. Moving money is what causes inflation. If you take that savings and you invest it, you buy some stock. If enough people buy that stock, the price moves up. That is an inflationary effect. Supply and demand is the biggest contributor to inflation. So during the COVID 
lockdown, we actually made less product. And yet, we had the government borrowing money and stimulating the economy with it. We had the Federal Reserve increasing monetary supply and losing, lowering interest rates. So those of us consumers were able to borrow money and then spend it. So that all caused the price of goods to go up. Right now, monetary policy, they're starting to trim how many dollars are in existence and they're trying to raise interest rates. As interest rates rise, we're less likely to borrow money. All three of us are less likely to borrow money and spend it. So there's fewer dollars chasing those goods. And the goods can be commodities, raw goods, they can be finished goods, products. And part of our inflationary effect right now is, you know, we're missing a lot of pieces of a finished product. You've heard of the scarcity in chips. Well, you can't build a car without those chips. So that has caused a reduction in supply because we're missing that in economics, we call them widgets. Like there's a, there's a piece of that assembly line that we don't have and the whole supply chain kind of falls apart on us. Or it just gets gone down and it takes more time to get there. And then of course there's assets. So assets are like, you know, companies, buildings, if you want to buy a rental property, now is probably not the best time. So these are all the inflationary effects. Now, when we get high inflation as we have now, it can actually reduce the value of your savings. If you're sitting on cash or fixed income, inflation can be a real killer. So we have the highest rate of inflation now in 40 years. So the last time we had inflation this high, I was in diapers and the price of diapers kept going up back then. So my parents actually chose to start using cloth diapers. So if we use what we know from the past, how will we get inflation under control? So the Fed's doing their part. It seems like politically, there's less political capital. They're not able to borrow as much money right now. So that'll dampen that. Corporations, as interest rates rise, they're starting to spend less money. We're starting to see layoffs and hiring freezes for the first time in a while which is of course gonna drive employment down. Unemployment reduces inflation because if you don't have a job, it's hard to spend money. Or if you're worried about your job, you may not decide to add that extra bathroom on your house, or you might not buy a new car because you're not sure if you're gonna have a job in six months. So these are all the downward pressures. Um, the public is actually starting to consume less. So you may have felt this yourself. There was an article the other day, there was a millennial that decided he only needed one bag of chips instead of two because the price had gone up. So reduction in consumption helps inflation as well. So we have a lot of ways to fix inflation and inflation is constantly in flux. So think of this elastic line that is inflation price raises, it goes up and down. If the price of a commodity increases, the company that uses it to make a finished good is going to have to raise their finished good price. If we're at full employment, you have to start paying more to get new employees. And then your existing employees are wondering why the new employee is making more than them. So then you have to raise rates and, and payroll for everyone. Well, this increases your cost, and then you have to increase the uh, final price of your finished product. These are all the things that move inflation up, and inflation is a natural phenomenon. This does happen throughout history. Um, scarcity always causes inflation. Bad monetary policy or too loose monetary policy will cause inflation. Overspending of any of the three parts can cause inflation. High employment, which we consider a good thing, causes inflation. So it's a balancing act. And right now, it feels a little unbalanced because for a long time, inflation didn't show up even though it should have. And then suddenly, that rubber band lost some of its elasticity and we got a spike in inflation. And now we're trying to sort of tighten it up to 
cause inflation to go back where we usually have it, two, three percent a year. So we recently hit nine percent, pretty close to nine percent. That's that's getting a little out of hand. And with all of the pressure we're doing right now to try to get it back into a reasonable level, quite often the rubber band snaps a little too far the other way. And so in a few years we might get deflation. You know, we might trigger a recession that causes high unemployment. And then if interest rates are too high, no one's borrowing money to spend it. We're sitting on savings that's paying us very good interest. So we're unlikely to spend that savings account money. Remember when we used to get paid interest? This could happen again. And so then we have to tweak it the other way. So this is natural. There are a lot of players. It can be scary and it's, it's very dangerous for people who live on fixed income or who spend all of their income. If you have discretionary spending in your budget, you're flexible. But if you have a very tight budget and most of them are fixed costs, most of your budget items are fixed, you can't wiggle on, that can be very bad. So inflation is very important and it's important to consider inflation in any good financial way. So hopefully that has helped explain inflation and let you know as painful as this is, it is temporary. It will go away at some point and it'll come back at some point and it'll, it will flux. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.